has served alongside a man that we highly respect here at New Hope. Apostle Robin Bullock uh, came into our life in uh, 2011, and alongside him stood Brother Mark Wesson. And he would come with Brother Robin when he would come alone, or whenever he would come, Brother Mark would be here with him and uh, sit right there on that front seat and always here to surf with him and during the past um how long have y'all been doing the prayer thing they he and his wife tina now they do church international's prayer on youtube every tuesday night right every tuesday night it's live uh they pray now for people all over the world it didn't start out that big but I do remember a word that I gave you that you were about to go to the world with this prayer, and that is exactly where you are now. Even though you said in Warrior, you're going to the world and uh, sharing that. And we are so honored tonight to have a powerful prophet in this house tonight, Brother Mark Wesson. You stand over the house and welcome him as he comes. He and Tina are dear friends of ours, and we sat across the lunch table and enjoyed fellowship. And then I didn't even know it until that day that I've known her mom and dad for many years. So that was awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What an honor to be here. Well, you know, we, we have been doing the prayer. My wife is a prayer warrior, let me tell you. She... Um, She's amazing. If you ever need prayer, that's the woman right there. If you can't get in touch with your pastor, you just call get in touch with her because she can reach God. It is such an honor to be with y'all tonight. We love you. I've been here numerous times uh, with Robin, and I feel like I already know each and every one of you, uh, but I just wanted to, to introduce my wife. We've been married what, a year and a half now, and that in itself is a story um, that we'll have to share another time, but, uh, but I just wanted you to meet her. She's very precious to me, and God uses her in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Love you, sweetie. I love you. Um, tonight... The Lord has, uh, he wanted me to read something, a word, a word that he'd given me. Uh, he kind of caught me off guard. He's been able to do that. He told me to tell you this. The prophetic is revealed harvest for the seed sown. The word of God is that seed. And when the word and the prophetic come together, we can see the future harvest of the word planted in this earth. The word speaks mysteries. The prophetic reveals those mysteries. And revelation, revelation flows out of the word and the prophetic coming together. Um, tonight, uh, the Lord wanted me to share a few things with you. Because we, how many people know we're in the end times? We're in the end time harvest. This place is going to fill up. I'm talking, y'all may need to build your building before this is over with. Because the glory is being poured into this earth, even as we speak. I'm talking a revival like you've never seen before. You know, we, we talk about Azusa Street and, and, and arms and legs growing back. It's going to be more than that. It's going to be much more than that. And what the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight is we've often heard about the end time harvest. We've talked about the glory. But what the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight is about the wealth transfer. Now, the wealth transfer, the Lord started sharing this with me over two years ago. Actually, February 3rd, 2019, at 5 a.m., he woke me up and says, write this down. 
And so what we're going to do tonight is I want to talk to you about how to partake of that wealth transfer, how to pull it in, because that wealth transfer is going to fund the gospel all over the world. God doesn't mind you uh, partaking of that wealth. And that's what he showed me. And he wants each and every person here to have their needs met, meet other people's needs, but have some wants too. He wants you to live nice. He wants you to be wealthy. And he wants you to partake of that. Because the end time harvest, you're, the wealth that's going to be on those that partake of the wealth transfer is going to draw the world in. And this is some of the things he told me about this. If we go to Proverbs 13, 22, please. If you got your Bible, turn there. If not, uh, we'll just read it. It says, A good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, in the international version, it says, A good person leaves an inheritance for his grandchildren, but the wealth of the wicked is reserved for the righteous. So, we, we, want to, we want to take that wealth God's promised us in his word. Because his word, it cannot, it cannot return void. He gave promises. How many people know if it's in here, we can have it? Amen? Amen. So, so he wants every promise he made to come to his children. He loves his kids. And you are his kids. And so what we need to do, Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So what's sad to say, if you'll go to uh, Luke 16, eight, uh, let me get over here real quick. It talks about a certain rich man which had a steward. And he was, he didn't do right by his master. So he called for the account of his steward. And his steward went out. You can read that it's in the first several verses. I'm only wanting that one verse. But what happens is, he goes out and he says, Hey, look, my boss, my master, he's called for settling up. So if you owe this, I'll take that for it. If you owe me 10, give me 5. If you owe me 20, give me 10. And in the 8th verse, he said, And the Lord commanded the unjust, commended the unjust servant, because he had done wisely. It says, For the children of the world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. When it comes to money, the church needs to learn some things. And so that's what the Lord started teaching me over two years ago. What the church needs to, to learn concerning the wealth transfer. Because the world knows how to do things that the church just doesn't do. You see these people who are wicked men, who are, are doing things, supporting abortion, trafficking, and all that wealth is in their hands. That needs to come into our hands. But you see, they know how to they know how to turn money. They know how to use money. They know how to to, to charge usury or interest on things. You no, know, God doesn't like debt. And the reason he doesn't like debt, he says, Oh no man anything but to love him. The reason he doesn't like debt is because it's like seed, plant, and harvest working in verse. You go and get your, ver your harvest, and then you've got to pay somebody over and over and over and over and over seed plus interest on something. So you're investing in your past instead of investing in your future. See, God wants us all out of debt. He wants us to be free from debt. And he wants to do that for each and every person in here. And when I get into this, the Lord, uh, the Lord gave me this word. And he said this to me. He said, 
My son, money buys access. Access to world leaders, access to celebrities, access to places. The world recognizes worldly power, even though they may acknowledge godly power. Unless they truly know me, they will not grant you access on your relationship with me alone. Those whose God is money will grant you access for no other reason, but they want what you have. Peter and John answered the, the man, the beggar on the side of the road, the crippled man, by saying, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I'll give, I'll give you. Because here's the thing, they knew that silver and gold wouldn't that man's need. It wouldn't take care of him, it wouldn't, wouldn't help him walk. Silver and gold, there's things silver and gold can't do. And I'm going to show you that true wealth is not always money. So, God instead at that man's need even though his god was money he was all he cared about was the money alms god met his need because of his expectancy so use your wealth to create expectancy from those who whose god is money little do they know that when they grant you access they grant me access says the lord and then another day, he told me this. He said, my, my son, money buys influence. Money will give you the ability to influence people that normally would not give you the time of day. Influence is different than access. Access gives, uh, access gives you a chance to, um, and gives you, hold a minute, excuse me, one second. Access gives you the ability to go into places and then to meet people that normally you couldn't talk to. Influence gives you the favor with those people. They will do for you because you have wealth. And when they do for you, they do for me, says the Lord. Wealth can influence elections, laws, policies, and that votes cannot. When a person has, sees luxury, cars, homes, airplanes, etc., what they do, they're drawn to that person. They draw attention to the person they're attached to. See, God doesn't mind you being wealthy. He doesn't mind you having things. You can walk through a forest. This is what the Lord showed me. He said, you can walk through a forest full of trees just walking through the forest. But let there be one Christmas tree and everyone will be drawn to it. They will talk about its beauty, its meaning, and its purpose. Some will criticize it, but everyone that sees it will be influenced. See, wealth influences people. Wealth gives you access. God wants his children to realize this. Now, God told me this long before the election. But now we see, we see that wealth can truly influence an election, don't we? Proverbs 10.22 says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. If you have your Bibles, go to Matthew 25, 14, please. I'm not going to keep you all a real long time tonight because I'm just going to share what he's given me and then he told me to release something into each of you that wants it. Because prophets release destiny. Okay. 
It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents. Now, we think of talent as an ability. But what he's talking about there is wealth. Five talents. Whether it be gold or silver, it's wealth. To another two and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received his five talents went out and traded with the same and made them another five. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought the other five and said, saying, Lord, thou deliverest them unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. The Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Boy, don't we all want to hear that? Hallelujah. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now he that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he that had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, hmm. reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw. Now I want to stop there and I want to explain something to you. At what point in this story do you see the Lord being hard at all? You don't. And this man knew about seed plant and harvest because he knew the master reaped where he didn't sow. Now a farmer, he goes out and sows in the field. He's expecting his harvest to come from this that field. But you know, we as, we as believers, when we sow into someone's life, we don't always reap from that person. If I sow into Sister Vic's church, she's good ground. This is a wonderful church. But your harvest may not all come, she may not come up and write you a check. Here's your harvest. It may come from somewhere else. So understanding seed time and harvest is very important. This, this fellow here understood seed time and harvest. He said, I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth, and there, has, there thou hast what is thine. And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou sowest that... Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not drawn. Notice he didn't even come in about being accused of being a hard man. How many people here have heard Robin teach on absolute goodness of God? Okay. This man didn't know that his Lord was absolutely good. He accused him of being a hard person, a hard man. You see, when we, when we, before we realize that God is absolutely good, many people believe that, well, God's making me sick to teach me a lesson, or God wants me poor because he feels like, well, maybe, you know, I don't deserve it, you know. After all, Jesus was poor. No, he wasn't. Jesus was never poor until he went to the cross. He falsely accused his Lord.
And the Lord answered and told him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not. Now why did he call him wicked and slothful? One, he's slothful because he didn't go and do anything with the money. He's wicked because he falsely accused God. Now remember, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So, thou, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money in the exchanges where I it coming I might have received thine own usury or some interest on it. Take therefore the talent from him that given unto him which have ten talents. We just saw the wealth transfer. You know that m a lot of people who are multimillionaires, they believe in giving, receiving, even though they're wicked people. I personally know a few millionaires, and every one of them is a giver. You'll find it. I happen to know of one person, I don't personally know him, but he owns a company that makes whiskey. And every dime that that whiskey company makes gets tied on because he knows the law of the tithe. And he's a multimillionaire. I had a friend of mine who's a millionaire. I was riding in the truck one day with him, and I said, you know, brother, you just can't outgive God. And he looked at me and said, yeah, but he doesn't mind you trying. Amen? That was a revelation to me. And so recently, and I'll just say this by permission, Tina and I a while back made a decision that we don't let an offering plate go by us. If we have an opportunity, we're in a meeting, and we can give an offering, we give one. And here's why. The Lord told me one morning, I was up early, and he says, do you like a harvest of a hundredfold nothing? I said, well, no, sir. He says, well, when you sow nothing, you get a hundredfold of nothing. Because everything is a seed. So even if you put an envelope in there, I'd rather have a hundred envelopes as I have a hundred nothings, okay? Just put an empty envelope in there before you let nothing happen to you, okay? But God wants us to prosper. He wants, and I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to get into a few things because we are in the end times. There's not much time for the harvest to come in now. Well, that's true with people, but it's also true with your harvest on all the money you've sown into the gospel. So what do we do? Well, this guy didn't like his outcome. He got thrown out. His money was given to the guy with ten. And so God prospered the guy with ten because he was faithful. You know, how many people know the scripture, John 10, 10, thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy? Well, it also says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, if we look at Mark 4, 2 and 8, he says, he taught them many things in parables. He said unto him his doctrine. Jesus' doctrine is this. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And he starts talking about the different grounds. Whether it be uh, first ground, the fowls of the air came and ate it. The second ground, it was shallow and the sun scorched it and killed it. The third, well, weeds and thorns grew up and choked it out and destroyed the seed. But the good ground produced a harvest. The thief cometh not for to the fowls of the air kill, or excuse me, steal, 
kill? Well, the sun scorched it and killed the seed. Destroy? Destroy is choked out by the weeds and other things that are planted in people's lives. Those people who are good ground, Jesus came to give them life and life more abundantly. So he wants that for each and every one of you. You know, a couple of years ago, I was in church and uh, during praise and worship, and I just kind of stepped up into heaven for a minute. And uh, the Lord looked at me and he says, uh, he said, son, do you know what the anointing is? Well, let me give you a secret. If God asks a question, you don't know the answer. So I, I said, I thought I did. And he says, uh, he said, son, the anointing is the power of God on human flesh to love like God loves. So Jesus was the Christ. He's the Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. And so he said, did he not say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? Jesus was love made flesh in this earth. And so what he longs to do is save people's lives. He doesn't want his people destroyed for a lack of knowledge. How many people think a million dollars is wealth? Anybody? <laughs> okay. How many think ten million dollars is wealth? Brother Jerry, I need to borrow you for a minute. Nope. <laughs> nope. How about this guy right here? I need him too. The one looking at the other one. <laughs> now, Brother Jerry, I'm not going to make you walk. Okay, I'm going to let you stand right here. Brother, if you ask God for a million dollars, And I want you to take for me 25 steps. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. All right, go take 25 steps. <laughs> big shoes. He got big feet. He may run out of room. That's close enough, man. That's close enough. If he made $40,000 a year for 25 years, he'd have a million dollars. Jerry, take a step. That's good. If Jerry made a million dollars in one year, he'd be wealthy. You see, the difference is not the money, it's the time. Time makes the difference. So, God wants you to get a revelation of accelerated harvest. Hallelujah. Because we're in the last days. And so the harvest is going to come quick if you'll believe God for it. I mean, you know you've got to have faith. The only way you get things from God is by faith. You have to believe Him for it. You come on up, brother. I'll let you sit down. Thank you, Brother Jerry. Thank you, young man. So, if you can find it in the Word, you can have it, right? All right. Hmm. You know, in Mark 10, 23 through 31, let me say this to you. Your average person trades time for money. We all go to work. I have a job. I trade time for money to some degree. I'm on full commission, so you know it's kind of different, but I trade time for money on some level, and every person that has an hourly job trades time for money. But you know, the wealthiest people trade money for time. 
time is the factor that determines wealth. So, so the Lord is going to accelerate your harvest. It says, Mark 10, 23, And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall it be to have riches? They that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Now listen to this. And the disciples were astonished at his words. Huh. Because they left fishing businesses and all this other stuff. They were all pretty wealthy at the time. But Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Because they thought only the wealthy could be, I guess. And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Here's a key coming up. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all, and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto thee, There is no man that has left house, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, or lands for my sake, and for the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold. When? Not in, not in the sweet by and by, not, not a house in heaven, now. Faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands, and with persecutions, and let me explain what that, that persecution is. How do I defend my wealth? I'm a Christian. How do I defend my wealth? You don't have to. You don't have to defend your wealth. God blessed you. You don't have to defend that at all. I've heard people criticize ministers who are, are wealthy or other Christians who are wealthy. You don't have to defend yourself. Remember when Jesus stood before Pilate? He didn't defend himself. He didn't say anything really to Pilate up until the point where he said, don't you know I have the power to put you to death? And he says, no, you don't. So, you don't have to defend yourself. In the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and last first. Now, Amos 9.13 says this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grape him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. That accelerated harvest. Because you're reaping as fast as you're sowing. We can do that. It's a promise. Let me get over here. Numbers. And in Numbers 4, uh, excuse me, yeah, Numbers 14, 21, it says this. But as truly as I live, now we're talking about Moses negotiated, <laughs> he intercedes for Israel, and he says, hey look, don't kill them all. He says, okay, I won't. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So glory. How many people know the Lord's Prayer? In Luke 11, Luke 11, 1 through 4, and it came to pass that his, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. He said unto them, okay, when you pray, say, 
our Father. You notice he didn't say my Father. He said our Father. He made us equal with him at that point. We can have everything Jesus has. Everything that belongs to Jesus is ours. We are co-heirs with him. Everything that is in heaven and on earth that belong, belongs to Jesus is ours. Okay? Hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. You know there's no time in heaven? There's no time in heaven. And so we can believe God. We can believe God that no time or accelerated time for our harvest that it would come up now. Now. You know, also in that, in Luke 11, it talks about the guy whose friends came over and said, hey, I got somebody came to my house. Give me some bread, man. I need some bread. What do we call money in, in, in slang here, bread? Give me some bread, man. I got friends over. He says, go away. He says, no, man, I got a bread. Go away. Because of his persistence, because of his faith in his friend's ability to give him bread, his friend gave him the bread. Faith moved that man to come down. Because he was persistent in it. Faith is persistent. Did you know that? So tonight, what God's told me to do. <laughs> yes, sir. What God's told me to do, anyone that wants it, anyone that wants that wealth transfer, I'm to lay hands on you and call forth the destiny of a giver into your life. Now, if you need... Healing, we'll address that too. But if you want the end time wealth transfer activated in your life, if you want what God has promised in his word, the Lord's never let me share this in its fullness tonight. And actually I had something else planned to share tonight. And he says, no, just today he says, no, this is what you're going to share tonight. I want that released into the earth. And he also told me this. 